episode of the Brett Allen Show, a pop culture podcast where we chat with your favorite actors and celebrities from film, television, music, comedy, and more. And you will recognize our next guest from a lot of different projects, uh, Euphoria, first of all, uh, Sneaky Pete, and uh, Bosch, Sex, Drugs, and Rock and Roll, but most recently as Nikos on the Netflix thriller, True Story, as Nikos. Oh my God, uh, Johnny, welcome into the show, sir. It's great to have you. Thanks, thanks a lot. Thanks for having me, Brett. Yes, well, if you haven't seen this show on Netflix yet, it's been out for a couple of weeks, I apologize. Uh, so you're going to probably get maybe a few spoilers, but uh, if you have seen it, uh, that's okay. I actually stumbled across this show. I was getting some tattoo work done and he's like, do you want to put something on? And I was like, sure. And uh, Netflix recommended this uh, film with Kevin Hart. Uh, and uh, my God, I came home that night and, and binged watched the entire thing. So Fantastic work. It just it was one thing after the other. Wesley Snipes, yourself, uh, <laughs> Billy Zane. I mean, my God. Billy kills it. Yeah, yeah literally. He does. Yeah, it's crazy. So let's talk about this and uh, how this project came about for you and uh, sort of your induction to this uh, crazy story, so to speak. Yeah, you know, I'm I'm a journeyman actor. I'm I'm get my parts by auditioning for them for the most part. I mean, I get, uh, you know, a, a couple of old filmmaker friends or someone who likes me and just asks me to do something rarely, but th those happen, but really I have to work to get these. Uh, and this was a, it came across to me as an untitled Kevin Hart project. No one got scripts. Uh, this was a year ago, like last okay. no November or December. I auditioned for it. It was described. I auditioned first for Billy's role. Okay. Uh, and then uh, I played him as a Greek, as a Greek American, but as a Greek whose first language is Greek and spoke uh, in a dialect because that's what they asked for. And then um, they said, no, you're great for that. But there's this other role who appears in, in more episodes. Will you read for his brother? And of course I said, sure. And I put it down. And then Eric Newman, Charles Murray, the director, uh, great casting director, Rachel Tenor, all asked me to meet with, meet them on a Zoom. And that's what we did. And we all loved each other. And I got hired and then they hired Chris Diamantopoulos uh, as my brother uh, a week later. And uh, that was last December. We had a Zoom together, I think, with with Kevin and Wesley and the whole producing team, Eric Newman, Charles, Charles Murray, those guys. And it was a blast uh, to get started. Immediately when Billy came on, his idea was, what if we had been here? What if we are just a Greek American family who speak like Philly guys? And, <laughs> and we that. said, we said, yeah, I mean, that makes sense. He said, it kind of takes the onus off of all of us to do a dialect that's similar. And also, you know, we've seen that guy uh and he was kind of right i think then chris and i said look let's just speak greek as often as we can as code which is what my parents did when i was a kid and then chris taught me all that greek chris diamantopoulos taught me greek again like i knew it when i was a kid but i never spoke it so yeah these are the kind of stories uh john that i just absolutely eat up because when I'm watching this and Wesley Snipes, of course, I mean, who the guy is just untouchable. He's a monster. And He's uh, so... whether it's intentional or not, like even the scenes where they're playing basketball, you know, it's like an ode to white men can't jump. At least in my mind, I would like to think that's what the director is is drawing on, whether it's true or not. And even your characters with Chris who we've had on the show in the past, you know, when he was doing um, Silicon Valley and, and then like all of that. And he always plays the like dude is great. one type of character, but you know, this was really crazy. And then to see Billy Zane show up as like the, the heavy, um, just fantastic. So you play Nikos, we talked about this and you already let us in on this. So this kind of answers our next question. You guys are brothers. Um, and we get the sense too that there's obviously family is important to you, which is so weird 
uh, which you guys are like running operations out of a CD strip club. Uh, and then at the same time, you know, your friend goes missing and then it just kind of unravels from there. Yeah. Um, which is just crazy. And like I said, I, I literally watched all of this in one night. Like I, I just watched the whole thing. Cause I was like, it just kept going and going. So it's, I wouldn't say this is art imitating or life imitating art necessarily, although it is, you know, Kevin kind of plays a version of himself, you know, outside of like the murders and everything else that happens. But um, no, the setup is Kevin, right? Yeah, I mean, you, yeah, get, I mean, you go, this is a tough life. And, yeah. and, <laughs> and even like, you know, as honest as he's been about his life in the past, just in social media and in the press, like outside of the, you know, extenuating circumstances of what happens in the story, like it's kind of could be true, like dealing with all these people and having a brother uh, that uh, is always, you know, taking money and, and it just a lot of struggles happen. But you and Chris are fantastic in this and the dichotomy Thanks. that you have absolutely that you have between the two of each other is just very fascinating. Uh, and I like the Greek code. You know, you guys use it as kind of like we don't want anybody else to know what we're talking about, but we're kind of having these little side conversations. Um, you guys have an interesting relationship uh, with each other in this film as it sort of progresses. Um, one seems to be a little bit more aggressive than the other, but you both kind of have the same mission in mind. And that's to kind of find out what happened to your, to Billy's character and sort of other people that come into the story. Um, how do you find your way into a character like this? Because you've done, as you said, as a journeyman actor, working actor, you've done so many different types of parts, but this one I think is a standout from a lot of things because of just sort of what you guys are dealing with in the story. Like when you find out about this and you start filming, like what is your process, John, to sort of get into this and figure out, you know, how can I bring this character life? So he's not just like, you know, as you said, that guy, um, who's you know somebody that just is a bad person because really there's that struggle of good versus evil and you almost in some of these episodes we find ourselves rooting for you and your brother really in a lot of ways right as the picture becomes bigger uh more than just dealing with wesley's character and getting the money because that situation gets resolved pretty fast but now yeah. it becomes a bigger issue of figuring out about our brother our yeah. brother who's gone missing and mom is concerned and um, you know, the phone's blowing up and it's like mom hasn't heard from him because we want to find him, you know, even though right. we already know what happened. Well, yeah, I mean, you know, they uh, it was originally eight half hour episodes. OK, uh, they, they combined the first two. I think it was smart. It really kind of like that tells a fat story of, yeah. of this, the launching into the next uh, group of them. But but it from our from an actor's point of view like developing the character story, you have to kind of delete stuff that you know from the script. So for us, it's really narrowing down what do we know and what do we need to know? Right. And, and Chris uh, uh, came on and I, I was really, really grateful because I didn't, I had this great uncle of mine who before Chris came on, I called this old Greek and, and I said, look, I have an idea that I want to be able to peel off Greek. And this guy sat on the phone with me for like three hours and translated stuff. <laughs> I for love me. it. Um, and his translations were great, but they come from an 85 year old experience. And Chris is a first generation Toronto Greek. Uh, okay. And so his first language was Greek and his is really modern and guttural and dark and tough and he was able to really make it about these brothers who run the cd business but in general aren't bad guys no they, they do bad guy stuff but in general aren't we don't normally beat and kill but it, you know when our brother's in jeopardy and we need the story it's like you're threatened and you do you know uh so that's just it i mean we're trying not to play bad guys we're trying to play guys who really need something and they're willing to do a lot to find the information. Yeah. I've, I've had other actors on in the past who have played a lot of those types of roles. Um, I'm not sure if you're familiar with who Robert Lasardo is. He's the uh, actor who has all the full body tattoos. He like is in basically plays a bad guy in pretty much everything um, yeah, yeah. That you can imagine, but it's really, he even said the same thing in a past conversation. Like, 
it's not necessarily always about you're a bad person, but it's like what links are you as a person willing to go to to find out what happened uh, to a situation that's been clearly unresolved, right? Because as I said, again, spoiler alert, but if you haven't seen it, I apologize. You you kind of resolve early on the issues with the character of Wesley Snipes and getting the money. And Kevin says, I'm going to fix this, you know, and he's a problem solver. But then now it's like, we got to figure out what happened to this other guy. And there's all these twists and turns that happen in between. And then finally, resolution is become. So really, what I'm understanding is it's not so much about how can I play this as a bad guy, but really just sort of what would I do if I were in this kind of situation? Yeah. You know, I coach actors too. I, I'm lucky. I trained uh, to act a long, long, you know, 30 years ago. And I learned a technique at Rutgers. I learned the Meisner technique. And okay. though it's really specific, uh, it, the basic language of it can talk to a lot of actors. And I just discovered over the last 10 years, really, that friends would ask me uh, to work with them on a scene. And my language as an, as an actor kind of translates to other actors, even if they haven't tra- uh, done that. So, so it's really, for me, uh, a joy to be able to like implement what I know as an actor into uh, other people's work. And a big joy for me in this one was to watch like Wesley is completely and utterly truthful all the time. Yeah. He so that I, way. He, he just, he is uh, an organic, perfectly simple actor. He doesn't add a lot of bullshit to it. And to be in his, in the scenes with him the whole time, it kind of like reaffirms my way of working, which is just talking and listening. And and you're in a circumstance. What would you actually do? Yeah. And what would? And then you have to kind of carve away. What would this guy do if he's been raised among cash and guns his whole life? Like, what would his first reaction be? But it's got to be honest the whole time. So hope hopefully we don't come off as like drooling, sinister Greek bad guys. No, like like I said, you know, I find myself rooting for you both um, quite regularly because. I think to myself, well, what if I had a brother that went missing? What would I, you know, what links or my seven-year-old, if something happened to him, like, what oh my God, God am I what will you turn into, man? You know, you like know? I'm talking, like, I don't know. <laughs> I always joke about Liam Neeson, you know, taken kind of levels, but I would certainly, I mean, even just in normal everyday circumstances, I know what I'm willing to do to make sure that my child is cared for. So take that to another level of what you guys are dealing with. And you don't come off as sinister and seedy. And I think that's what kind of makes this, you know, seem palatable and not uh, cachet or stylized as far as like the bad Greek bad guys, even though you're running a strip club business. I mean, and that's been kind of we've seen that in different situations, but really more. It's not even about the money or the whatever. It's just kind of like, hey, this is what we know. And somebody owes us a lot of money and now our brother has gone missing. Um, and I, I, I think they with, did a great job with that. With the, did, whole, yeah. the, the whole story, as you say, it just flies and it shakes you up. There are just so many turns. It's like, Oh, there's some predictable ones. Maybe people say I did. I can't predict nothing, man. I, I mean, couldn't. I've seen the movie. I can't tell you what the ending is. Yeah. <laughs> so I couldn't, you know, I couldn't, I didn't find anything predictable. I rewatched it a second time. Um, after we confirmed our interview because I wanted to go back and rewatch it. But after like now, then I could say, well, I watched the first episode and then I was like, okay, now that I'm watching Wesley and, you know, Billy's character and kind of the things that they're having happen, it, it seems at this point that it's definitely, you know, they're clearly trying to get something out of him but irregardless or that's not even a word regardless it's <laughs> it's a it's a great film um what interested you in becoming a storyteller or an actor john like what was it that interested you because you got a start quite early on uh yeah. with some projects what, what was it that drew you in i uh, you know i uh i i grew up a greek kid in los angeles uh in a church downtown uh, called St. Sophia Cathedral. I was an altar boy. And I also was part of this thing called the Junior Choir, which uh, 
young people and teens joined and we did pageants and plays and we went to camp a couple times a year when it wasn't camp time as retreats to rehearse these things okay and it was just part of my social I just liked to play around and 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 to play characters in my real life so this like early I did pageants and plays in church went into my elementary school stuff I just loved doing it and then I told my parents I was going to go to college and study business, but I studied uh, theater. Uh, <laughs> and then I just kept, yeah, I just kept going. And then I decided I really want to study acting. So I left California. I went to Rutgers and that's a conservatory where all you do is study acting. Yeah. And that was really fun. Yeah. A lot of people have um, who have gone there and been classically trained. It's a great school, you know, and I think, um, you know, it's, it's, I always like talking to, to actors who have had that, that classical training, uh, who have done theater and plays and all of that before they go to television. And then they even go back and do things because it's a different skill set for somebody to have, you know, doing a live production versus like something like this. It's an anthology series where, you know, you have a lot of room to sort of do different takes and, kind of reset something or whatever versus something live where it's like you know every night the outcome can be fairly predictable but it might yeah, yeah, if somebody yeah. forgets a line or something like that um i have friends improv. who have done really long runs i've never really done a long long run more than two months but friends who have done a year my wife was her her first job was on the tour of Brighton Beach memoirs. Yeah in yeah long long time ago and yeah they at some point it becomes like how do you how do you make each other break you know <laughs> I, yeah. I really prefer I actually really have discovered I like film acting just uh even though I love love theater and doing theater just film acting you, you have to get it quickly and it has to come more organically and less about plotting it out you know yeah so everybody would probably know again you mentioned your wife she's a very popular actress as well how does that work at night while we're doing dinner dishes do you guys run lines with each other or <laughs> or are you guys no running? you know she actually is just getting back wendy gazelle is just getting back she tried to retire her agent refused about 15 years ago to <laughs> to lead my kid my kid was a competitive figure skater ella and uh she retired last year from figure skating at 19 and now is in fashion school in Italy. So wow. she's doing great. But my wife was moved to Michigan for three years so that she could train to be an ice dancer, my kid. And so she really gave up acting and then just started the last six months. And right today she's on, she's on a set of a television series here in Los Angeles and it's her, uh, you know, so no, we, and we do not, uh, I, I do not work lines with anybody. I, I keep that all uh, my own work. Uh, I, I never, ever, ever run scenes with anybody until I'm with the partner in the thing. Yeah, I've heard that yeah. really kind of. And that's going back to the Meisner. You know, it's just really kind of it, it probably keeps it fresh, too. You know what I'm saying? Because you got one person who maybe is doing it one way. You've worked with a lot of amazing people over your career and some great actors. Has there ever been anybody one or maybe a couple who have sort of shaped you or made you better as an actor or as a performer that, that would stand out to you? Uh, that's great. Um, I mean, the ones that I worked with, I just looked up to and was, you know, at the early stages, I got to be with Eddie Murphy on a couple of things. I got to be with Leslie Nielsen. You know, I would never thought I would be a comedian or a comedic actor. Um, the actors that I wanted to be uh, like, were I never got to work with Gene Hackman. I never got to work with Robert Duvall uh, yet. Uh, Dustin Hoffman, Richard Dreyfus. I just got to do a Western with Richard Dreyfus as oh, wow. he was my partner too. And he's one of the actors where I really grew up uh, admiring his work and loving the movies that he did. And so, yeah, I did just get to do that. But no, I mean, early on, I'm, you're just in awe in a lot of these situations of, sure. you know, big talent. Um, wow. Being on an Ang Lee movie, Ang Lee really made me, uh, really inspired me to bring 
it to a way more intimate level, even just the way he talks to actors, but all his stuff is super intimate and like, you know, just talking to you and listening to you is really the thing you're doing, you know? So that's fascinating. Yeah. That's cool to know that uh, Richard has another movie coming out. Um, yeah, he does. Forward to. Yeah. So one last question or two here. Um, what is the best advice that you have ever been given as a performer that has sustained you? I mean, again, you've worked with a lot of amazing people, uh, maybe early on in your career when you were just getting started and you were working with some of these fantastic folks or maybe even to the recent times of projects like, uh, you know, true story or something like that. Yeah. I, uh, I don't know what someone else had told me. The thing that I find is really helpful that I learned in college from Maggie Flanagan, my acting teacher was, uh, to, to hang out with actors who are better than you are. Uh, and she, she just meant artists in general, like hang out with artists, hang out with people who create things, uh, people who are, who you admire, who might be brighter, more talented, more experienced. And um, th that, that in general is what makes actors different than other actors is that all of uh, uh, this, the writer Fred Golan told me about five years ago, you know, all uh, as a writer and a producer, sorry for the analogy, you're all animals in a zoo, right? Right. Like every one of you are animals. You're all giraffes. You're all tigers. You're all, but when you go watch a, a, a group of zebras hanging out, like one of them catches your eye because they're more interesting. And that takes living as a person. It takes experience and living and doing things that you wouldn't do in order to see how you would behave if you're in another circumstance. So always making your life more interesting will make you a better artist and a better actor. I love it. One skill set that you wish that you had that you don't something that you wish you could do. I mean, language, put, language, language. Okay. Yeah. I, w I wish I had stuck with Greek when I was a kid. I, I learned some Spanish. I'm not good enough at it. My daughter's learning Italian right now. I just wish that I had 10 languages in my brain. That would be great. I love it. Well, we have been chatting with John Ailes, True Story, streaming now on Netflix. A lot of other amazing projects that I can see uh, are coming down the pipe. Uh, John, thanks for joining us today. I appreciate it. Thanks, Brett. It was really fun.